nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another edition of Shu Fu Review for you. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about chemical bonding. You know, making these videos has kind of been a bonding experience. It kind of has. If you can believe it, it brought us closer together. Can I get a high five? Totally. Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh, um, uh, wardrobe. Cut. Bonding key concept one. Chemical bonds are attractions between atoms. When bonds are broken, energy is absorbed, endothermic. When bonds are formed, energy is released, exothermic. <laughs> are you alright? Speaking of BARF, breaking bonds absorb energy, releasing energy, forming bonds. Great way to remember the order there. Another way is to do this little clapping motion. So when you make a bond, you release energy. And when you break a bond, ugh, I have to absorb energy. Bonding, key concept two. Atoms tend to react by losing or gaining electrons to achieve the electron configuration of a noble gas. Now, here's remember from the last set of videos for periodic table, noble gases have a full outer shell of valence electrons. They almost all have eight, except for helium, which has two. We call that set of eight electrons a stable octet. All other elements are trying to achieve this stable octet. So metals, which tend to have a very low number of valence electrons, it's very easy for them to lose those electrons, to lose that shell and achieve that stable octet by using the shell just below. Nonmetals, which have a higher number of valence electrons, they tend to gain electrons to achieve that stable octet. Now, for example, sodium being a metal has one valence electron. It's very easy to just lose that one valence electron and have that full stable octet right there below. Now, fluorine, for example, has seven valence electrons. So it's very easy for fluorine to gain that one electron to achieve its stable octet. Bonding key concept three. When electrons are transferred, the bond is ionic metal to non-metal. These bonds exhibit high melting points, are non-conductors as solids, but are conductors as liquids or in aqueous solutions. Metals which tend to lose electrons can be paired with non-metals which tend to gain electrons. There's a transfer of that electron from metal to non-metal. The metal forms a positive ion, the non-metal forms a negative ion, and the two ions attract to one another. Now, when we look at a lot of these ions put together, we get what is called the crystal lattice. The crystal lattice is a repeating pattern of positive and negative ions. These ions are very tightly held together, which leads to ionic solids having very high melting points and also their brittleness. Those ions are trapped in the crystal lattice. They can't move, so they can't conduct electricity. However, when we melt or dissolve the crystal lattice in water, the ions break free. Now that they are free, they're able to conduct electricity. Bonding key concept four. When electrons are shared, the bond is covalent, non-metal to non-metal. Compounds with covalent bonding generally have low melting points and are non-conductors. Since two non-metals both want to gain electrons, they must share, and a covalent bond is formed. Covalently bonded substances form distinctly separate molecules. These molecular compounds are not tightly held together like ionic compounds are. And as a result, they have low melting points and tend to be soft. They have no ions, so they do not conduct electricity. Bonding key concept five. When electrons are mobile, delocalized or mobile C of electrons, among many atoms, the bond is metallic. Metals are generally solids and good conductors. The reason why metals are such good conductors is because of this sea of electrons. The electrons are so weakly held by the metal atoms 
that they can kind of go wherever they want. They are delocalized. Now, when we apply a current to the metal, this can cause the electrons to go from one area to another, A to B. Bonding, key concept six. Bond types and properties can be identified based on electronegativity values. Now what we learned before in the periodic table videos is that metals tend to have very low electronegativity values and nonmetals tend to have very high electronegativity values. So when you have a metal with a nonmetal, you have a very large difference in electronegativity and that bond is said to be ionic. Now when you have two nonmetals, which both have very high electronegativity values, the difference between them is very small. That type of bond is said to be covalent. Bonding key concept seven. A covalent bond is the sharing of one pair of electrons between atoms. Double and triple covalent bonds are the sharing of two and three pairs of electrons. For example, if we look at Cl2, each chlorine atom originally has seven valence electrons. So to get a stable octet, each chlorine atom would need one more valence electron. Both chlorine atoms will get together, share one each, for a pair in the center, we call that a single bond. If we go to O2 now, both O atoms have six valence electrons. Each needs two to fulfill the octet rule. So they're gonna share two pairs in the middle. That's gonna make a double bond. Finally, let's look at N2. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each nitrogen atom needs three more electrons to get a full outer shell of electrons. So they're gonna share three pairs in the middle. We call that a triple bond. Bonding, key concept eight. Metals tend to lose electrons to become positive ions with smaller radii. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons to become negative ions with larger radii. Now, sodium, for example, has an electron configuration of 2A1. Now, when it loses that one electron in its outer shell, it loses an entire shell it becomes a smaller ion. Now, nonmetals, like fluorine for instance, which has a electron configuration of 2,7, when it gains that electron, it's not gaining an extra shell, but it is gaining an electron in that shell. And all those electrons are repelling on each other, effectively making the radius larger. Bonding key concept nine. A compound containing only covalent bonds is a molecule. Covalent bonds can be either nonpolar, even sharing of electrons between atoms like H2, or polar, uneven sharing of electrons between atoms like HCI. When we have two of the same atoms bonded to one another, like in the diatomic molecule Cl2 for example, we say the bond is not polar. Both atoms have the exact same electronegativity values, and so they attract the electrons the same amount. Therefore, they are sharing the electrons equally. If we look at two different atoms, let's say HCl, we have two different electronegativity values, so those electrons cannot be shared equally. Whichever element has the higher electronegativity value, we say is the negative side of the molecule, and whichever atom has the lower electronegativity value, we say has the positive end of the molecule. Bonding key concept 10. Compounds containing polyatomic ions exhibit both covalent and ionic bonds. For example, NaNO3. Now, in this example of NaNO3, I have the polyatomic ion nitrate. I know I have nitrate because I cross-reference it with table E, your selected polyatomic ions. Don't forget about table E. Now, with sodium nitrate, sodium is my metal here. Sodium has lost an electron to become an ion, and nitrate, as you saw on table E, has a negative charge. So the sodium to the nitrate is my ionic bond. Now within the polyatomic ion, the NO3, we have nitrogen bonded to oxygen. Now those are two nonmetals, and when that happens, I've got covalent bonding. So when you see a polyatomic ion, you have two types of bonding, ionic and covalent. Bonding key concept 11. The degree of bond polarity can be determined by comparing the electronegativity values of the two atoms. The greater the electronegativity difference, the greater the polarity. If we look at our picture here, 
we can see that on the extreme left, we have an HH bond. When we take the difference in the two electronegativity values, we get zero. Thus, this is a nonpolar bond. If we look to about the middle, we've got an HCl bond. When we subtract the two electronegativity values, we get 0.9. This means that this is a polar covalent bond. If we look on the extreme right, we have an HF bond. The electronegativity difference is 1.9. This is also a polar covalent bond. It is just much more polar than the HCl bond. Bonding, key concept 12. Hydrogen bonding is a particularly strong intermolecular attraction that occurs between molecules containing hydrogen and the elements fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Now, a couple things to remember about hydrogen bonding is that first of all, it is not a bond. It's an intermolecular attraction between molecules. Hydrogen bonding is also fond, which means it occurs with elements fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. It's a great way to remember it. Lastly, molecules that have hydrogen bonding tend to have very high melting and boiling points. Bonding key concept 13. If molecules contain polar bonds and are asymmetrical, the molecule is polar, like NH3, H2O, or HCF. If the molecule contains polar bonds but is symmetrical, the molecule is nonpolar, thanks CO2, CH4. Now, if we have a molecule containing two of the same atoms, like in a diatomic, we've got a nonpolar bond and we automatically have a nonpolar molecule. If we have a molecule containing polar bonds, though, the molecule may be polar or nonpolar overall. Think of, oh snap, symmetrical nonpolar, asymmetrical polar. If we think about polar molecules, they're not going to look the same on all sides. If we think about nonpolar molecules, they will look the same on all sides. Many times these molecules contain carbon. Bonding, key concept 14. Electron dot diagrams, Lewis structures, can be drawn to illustrate bonding and help determine the symmetry of molecules. Now our examples here are for water. First, we have H's coming together with the O. And when we draw our Lewis structure, we see that our central atom, oxygen, has pairs of dots on it, which means it's a bent molecule, not linear. This means it's asymmetrical. And if it's asymmetrical, it has to be polar. Now our other example here for methane, CH4, when we bond it correctly as a Lewis diagram, we see that there are no unbonded pairs of electrons on our central atom carbon. This means that everything is the same all the way around. We say that it is symmetrical and nonpolar. Bonding key concept 15. Diatomic elements such as H2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2 each contain a single covalent bond. O2 contains a double covalent bond, and N2 contains a triple covalent bond. Don't forget Brinkelhoff, or if you prefer, hoff brinkel Now, we've already explained why O2 and N2 have a double and triple bond, respectively, but it's just a really good thing to remember that all the diatomics have single bonds, whereas O2 has a double bond and N2 has a triple bond. Bonding, key concept 16. Molecules are attracted to each other by dipole-dipole attractions, hydrogen bonding, or London dispersion forces. These forces are collectively known as intermolecular forces. The key here is to remember the hierarchy of these three forces. The London dispersion force, which is associated with nonpolar molecules, it's also known as the weak intermolecular force, is the weakest of all the forces. The dipole-dipole attraction is associated with polar molecules and is a much stronger force of attraction. Now hydrogen bonding, which we've already talked about before as being fond, hydrogen with F, O, or N, is the strongest of the intermolecular forces and it is also associated with polar molecules. But we never off, but we zone to the break of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.
So then I told him, this spider ate the apple. Cool story, bro. 